You haven't burned your bridges. No. Yeah. Hey, Ralph, right on time. What's hey. up? Man? Oh, I thought you were going on a break. Yeah. <laughs> so you haven't burned your bridges, and this guy said you could come in. Yeah. And then, back around. and then, yeah, I reached out to him and told him that I was having issues, and then he reached back and helped me. We've been there ever since. The wheels fall off. Hey, John, I've heard your name. This is an incredible compliment. I've heard, I've heard yeah. uh, a person say you're a savior. And I go, well, I don't think he wants to be compared to a savior, but you well, have... Never heard that before. Well, there you go. You heard it. That, uh, it was a nice... I'll tell you who told you later on. Okay. Um, nice person. Uh, but that is kind of what you represent. You're, you guys are a clean living band. You have a, you have a work ethic. You have a, um, you're always at posting on Facebook, going to the gym, keep up the spirit, be focused, drive hard. I mean, I could, I've seen it a bunch of times. Your, your messages, they're very encouraging and they're uplifting. Tell us more about it. How bad were you and what made you personally turn around? Um, well, I, I drank and used most of my whole life, really. Um, it never really was getting anywhere. Everything changed when I finally decided to stop drinking, you know, and that was it. Um, the writing changed, um, everything. I met my wife, Barbara. Right on. Um, hey, she'd been by me, stood by me on my decisions uh, musically, you know. She gets a little upset sometimes because I, I do, do a, I'm always thinking about the band. If we go out of town, like, did you bring the cards? I want to give cards out because it's yeah. always, that's a on my mind. It's very important to me. Right. Cut it like the Kings. Um, I think my mom used to tell me that um, I'm in people's lives for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, my past, what I've gone through um, to where I'm at today, it all happened for a reason. I believe that. Everything happened for a reason. Everything I went through as, as a kid growing up and into my adult life and all the good and bad decisions that I made um, were for a reason. It all led me to here. Um, so whenever I could talk to someone or someone asked me something regarding whatever the issue is and if I know or if I can comment on it, I just try to be sincere and say this is what I did. This is right. what I think you can do. Um, it's all about making a choice. Yeah, yeah. You know, making a decision, um, whatever that is. And it's not easy, you know. Um, yeah. It's not easy. You just got to do it. And it's like, so that's what I try to, you know. Did you go to AA? Because I, I have a huge respect for AA. Yeah, and, I do. Yeah. Program I was in and out of the rooms my whole life, but not until I decided to. I always went there for the wrong reasons. It was always to bum smokes or to look at girls or whatever. And <laughs> when I started going there to actually for the problem, which was to quit drinking, yeah. um, everything changed. And you know, after thirty something years of drinking and using, when I went there and actually did what they suggested, you know, followed the suggestions and got a sponsor and did all that. Everything changed. Um, everything changed. No. Uh, amazing. How about you? Did you go, uh, Randy? Did you go through AA? Or uh, John took me to AA, and then uh, we had a talk, and we realized that I was just trying to fill a hole, and so I was going to refocus and fill that hole with becoming a base legend. There you go. That's what our conversation was. Right on. Yeah. You know, in the, the three years that I have heard you guys, so I was listening to you when I first came to the cooking three and a half years ago and I caught, caught, caught your act almost in the middle of the first week or two. And actually that was COVID. Uh, it wasn't long after that. And um, you were good. You were a good band. It was fun, entertaining. I remember that night, I think it was at the brewery, at the Chico brewery. Chico brewery. Yeah. And it was fun. And it was, it was really, but to, to, to hear you guys now, you're vastly improved. Really, you're vastly, which is you're always improving. We, uh, hopefully, you'll always improve. Hopefully, yeah. these shows keep getting better and better. I definitely hope. We're pretty that. hard on on ourselves as a band. I mean, it might not show <laughs> in the in the performance or whatever, it does show. but we try to to really be our best and do. And we're always trying to improve. Um, and you know, I don't want to. When I started it, and I talked to Alan. Um, you know, what do you want to get out of this? I, I want to be, I want to have clarity. I want to have professionalism. I don't, I want to be what the other bands are not giving us. And that's where I come out and we're interactive and, you know, try to get on the guys. Hey, get out there and talk to everybody so that we're approachable. Right. So that's what. Yeah, you, know, you are approachable. 
Well, you always, you all of you are. Uh, I see Randy all the time. We're always bumping into each other. By the way, shout out to Annette. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I love you, Moses. <laughs> Moses, hey Annette, <laughs> peace and love to you. And I guess to Barbara and so many other people. Oh, by the way, I just got to run out real quickly here. I got we got Barbara and Annette. Uh, we got Lindsay, uh, Renda, uh, Renda. Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Lindsay. Uh, we've got Kelly, Jared, Jaden. Hey, what's going on? Hi, Vera. What's going on? I hope you're doing well, Vera. Uh, Grant and Dave and Angel. What's going on, Angel? There's Chris, Sherry, and Darwin. They're always listening. And hey, hope you're having fun with Terry and Mindy, John and Patty. So many of you people. Thank you, uh, Rika and Lucas. Thank you so much for listening to the show and contributing to the listening by getting back to me and telling me that you listen to these shows. I appreciate it. So you got a following, which kind of like the King shows. Uh, come out the 17th, Friday the 17th at Enoteca, and that's in another nine days. Mm -hmm. And you will see the following that you kind of uh, your kind of band is garnering. You do play, you do a lot of the really good covers, but you also write some of your own songs. What are some of your what what? There's a couple ones that just have a catchy catchy phrase. What are the name of those songs? You um, your original songs I'm talking about. Anything you want, Billy Number Two, Loud and Clear, The Fight. Um, some of those are on the new album that we just released. The fight is everywhere right now. The fight is everywhere. Um, we just. You mean meaning what? Randy? It's on all streaming services. Is it really? You can find it everywhere. Yeah. Okay, they just cool. released on May first. Yeah, we did three songs. We're doing it in three song batches. Okay. And that was the first batch, which is the fight. Um, Loud and clear, and there's time. All originals. Um, so we got two albums worth of originals, and right on, sure. we just actually last was the last week do we play like Porter Pints yeah. for the benefit for uh, Doe for Devin. We yeah. unveiled a very very new song, literally a week and a half old. Um, so I gave him a challenge to write a drinking anthem song, and from his point of view. We wrote a drinking anthem song. A drinking anthem song uh -huh. by two non-drinkers. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, you know, I, I, I wrote it how I felt it, and that was basically have a drink for me. And you know, get out your seats, raise your hand, say, hey, 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 have a yeah. drink for me. Go for it, because that's what it's all about. You know, have fun, whatever right. you do. Have and that's fun. a brand new one, so we'll hear that one on You'll hear Friday. That. You'll hear that on, on May, Friday. Uh, on May 17th, okay. Um, you have also got, uh, so you do great cover songs too. You guys put out, you you have long sets, you're disciplined, you got uh, you have you have fun, first off, foremost. You guys are having a good time, I can tell. That's and what that's, it's all about. Yeah. There was a, a, a fan, for lack of a better word, uh, I believe her name is Jade, and she came up to me the last couple of times, you know Jade, I hope. And that's the one she by the way, said that. She, hey, she came and told me, she, and it was a great compliment. I, I was very humbled by it. She says, you guys are so professional, and you start on time, and you, you have yeah. all this energy, and she said it to me a few different times, and it makes me feel good because I'm really trying. I get really, for lack of a better word, like, I get a little anal during sound check because I want us to be ready. Right. So when 8 o'clock comes or 7.30, I want to start, and give it to everyone and then break it and get back and do it because I want to keep the energy there. Um, they're all great at uh, dealing with me pre, uh, pre show. <laughs> Randy's over here rolling his eyes. Like, I mean, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> it is Jade. I know her, Jade. Yeah. You know, Jade. That, I just gave her a shout out. So, yeah. from our Vera, uh, and they're, they're all listening, and Jared, her son, who's been on the show, and Jade has been on the show. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they, uh, we all see that in your in your playing, and you put on a show. It's meaningful. It's fun. It 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 kicks it. But you've had a big show. Let's see, what's the big show? You had a Betty Green Center, right? You were there. We and did the uh, yeah, uh, Betty Billy, Green. the Betty Green. We played Walmart. We played, hey, we just played that. Walmart. <laughs> That's right. I, the, with the Pepsi uh, boxes all packed up. That right? was the pinnacle. That's yeah. <laughs> Uh, we made it to Walmart. We were on clearance that day. <laughs> you were on the clearance aisle. Yep. No. Roll back. I, we, we were in Germany, and uh, yeah, I saw these pictures, and I see it's like a, you guys really set up a stage on Pepsi. Pepsi did that for us. It was fun. Yeah, really? Pepsi did that, yeah. They got there really super early. We got there at 5, and they already had it done. Wow. 
Wow. So shout out to Pepsi. And what time did you play from what time to what time? We they, we started at 8. They, they changed it. We were going to go from 9 to 12, and then they changed it for whatever the reason to get all their stuff in there, announcements and such. And uh, So we started at 8, and they did their announcements, and we, were, and we played till 12. Wow. Wait, from 8 in the morning? There was about a 30-minute break yeah. because they did their announcements, and we went in there. 8 in the morning until... Okay, is that the earliest gig you've ever had? I mean, you, most people. We used to rehearse <laughs> around eight in the morning every Saturday. Wow. Um, as we've gotten busier and busier through each year, yeah. um, the <laughs> rehearsals are going down, and we're not going as early. So we try to get one in during the week if we need to. Oh, that's that's right. We're always critiquing. God, we need to, we need to beat up this song. We need to do better. Um, so we're always trying to throw a new song in the mix too. Yeah, yeah. We have to stay fresh and. Do what yeah. everybody else is not doing. Another thing is, I course not. I don't. I don't. Dr. Gigi wants every song to be dan danceable, but you do. You have all your songs are danceable. The majority of them, I usually don't. I usually step out on this, the slow dances. Uh, but that is one thing I think that has improved since I first heard you three and a half years ago, and that is you play danceable songs. I mean, you keep me and other people. We want to be out there, kind of moving and shaking and having fun, right? And it builds. Yeah. Do you guys find it's just as much a, about us as it is about the energy that we get from everyone? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's what I was just going to bring up. Do you find the energy of the crowds dictates your show? I mean, we'll go off script. You go off script. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. call audibles because I'll, I make a different set list for every show we do, so it's never the same. I might do same. They'll not be the same songs, but they'll be in a different order. Yeah. And I'll think I have the greatest set list, and we'll be going, and I'll be looking, and the next song is something that's slower. I'll be like, nope. We're, and I'll yell. I'll look back at everybody and say, we're gonna do this one, and we'll go into it because I want people to keep having that fun, keep dancing, keep doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. And poor yeah. Alan's got all his guitar tones programmed, so he's got to go and find that particular one and what oh, bank it is. Yeah. and, and yeah. he has a lot of guitars and, and a lot of the songs I don't know if a lot of people reckon realize that some of the songs are in different keys as far as the guitar so he has different guitars that are in drop or in a different key so when he does a guitar switch it's not because he wants to use his, his different guitar it's because that song is in a different um, key right yeah. don't lie to the people yeah. uh, that's, 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 that's what's going on <laughs> So. Now I've heard I've heard Darren uh, Bradbury of uh, mm -hmm. Serpent Peace say the same thing. He says we just we feel the crowd. That's how I kind of put it in my brain. I said you really he goes yeah. If the crowd is into it, we can subtly make changes and build into it and, and feed the crowd because what you just said, Randy, it depends on the crowd. I guess what's the worst thing about performing live is you get a real do you get those dev door nail crowds. We once played for like an hour and a half straight to cows. To cows? Yeah, we did a private gig. Um, great people, and uh, they were. As we got later, it was they had they were having fun, but they were you know. Long story short, we just, it was almost like a rehearsal. Which, hey, right. you know, um, we still gave it our best. We did the best we could to do. But there were more cows than people out there. The cows, cows were wagging their tails. <laughs> they, were, they were into it. They producing more milk. I mean, they were over escorting their. What do they call it? Udders. Udders. <laughs> Writing their editors out there for you guys. Um, what's the biggest? And does a big crowd make a, a difference? Oh yeah. yeah, energy is in, you know when they're into it, you're into it. When yeah. you're having any, everybody wants to be a rock star. It doesn't matter yeah, to me. It true. could be Anoteca, Porta Pines. It's always a great crowd. There's a vibe when yeah. when they're lately over the last year or two, when you are doing an original song. And they're singing your song, hitting the you know the, the chorus right. with you. It's it's a good feeling. Wow, it's a good feeling. Be, I mean, they, when they do that to the cover songs, that's great. We have fun. But when they're doing it to your own song, it's pretty cool. Right on. Where do you guys see yourself in five years from now? I mean, are you are you plan to be the same, pumping out, getting bigger and better? Or the wheels fall off. Yeah, yeah bumping we'll the wheels right something. now. Shaking hands. Good you know, um, it's it's. It's, I don't know, it's a passion. It's a commitment, definitely a commitment. Uh, Ren, uh, Ren Lennon, she, Mom Group, the singer for Mom Group, she made a, she had a post that was saying, you know, about, well, I forget what's the best part about being in the band or what does it take to be in the band. I forget the post exactly. And one of the comments were, it, it's commitment. It's, you know, it's, 
it's like in your other family you have to work at it and that's where I've been blessed with these guys is everybody gets along um, we all have similar uh, aspirations of what we want to do you know they, everybody gets to do their own thing you know Alan does his own thing he has a, a new little album out there with his acoustic stuff cool. Randy does it uh, he has he's all over the internet he's got all kinds of videos out there and, and then songs he's doing he just came to me um, with some music that him and Damian Neal put together and said do you like it can you put lyrics to it and I wrote lyrics in 24 hours for that song wow. um, it's called coming back down and it's a uh, yeah. new yeah. project Gray System Theory. The song is called Coming Back Down. It's out everywhere. It's a uh, listen to it and tell us what you think it's about. Coming back. Is it on YouTube? It's on everything. Coming every... back down. Coming back down. Okay. Cool. And it's it's a little here. heavier than what. It's different from what we do with the games. It's different. Yeah. It's um. It's still me. It, to me, it's still me, but it's me singing a little bit differently. Um, I wrote the lyrics based on what he gave me and it, yeah. it just came. So when you when you write music, uh, both of you are, when you're, you're hearing new tunes or you're, you're coming up with music in mind, what instigates music coming to you? Does it take a special mood? Is it something you can easily call upon or is it something that is uh, fleeting? It can be there real hard and then... I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. And I've asked all, all the other band members and, and they've given me their different and I'll write a song. Give me something that you would want me to write about. Something that from you, even if, it, if it's something that you want to say to Gigi or something right. that you feel, and right. I will write a song about right. it, and we'll get it, we'll get it to music. Um, that's what I like to do. I like, wow. I like to be expressive and like to say the things that you know. When you're growing up as, as a boy or a male, you're shy away from the things that you, you know that you would say to a girl. You yeah. know, um, and I don't have to be because I don't really care. I, I'll say what what I feel, and I can express that. I can express that in music. So. I resonate with that completely. I used to, in college, believe it or not, I was always into English. I'm an English major, mm -hmm. uh, writer. And I would tell, I, I was hired at weddings. And they put me in a tuxedo and I'd sit in the corner and, and they would have a woman, a woman, would come up and give me any three words in the entire English language. Any three words, and I'll write a love poem out of those three, with those three words. Mm -hmm. Not rhyming, some rhyming, some, I haven't done it in years, but it was like the same thing. Just give me an idea, put it, give me something, you know, I had to produce. You had, and I had nice handwriting. I'd write it all nice and stylize it, and I'd put it on a card and give it to them. That's what the people used to hire me to do. Believe it or not, it was a great job. Uh, I made a total of four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of my lessons. Um, so yeah, the same kind of thing. Do you, Randy, when you were, when you, can you just be like strumming around when you're at home? Are you still playing regular guitar? Or are you playing only bass? I got a bunch of them now. I got two. Yeah, I got a lot. I play everything, so yeah. it's for me. It's like painting silence is what music is, and then I try to, uh, without words, put you into a, a place or a feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not really good with the words, but that's why we kind of try. Are either of you? Uh, you know, I ask a lot of my guests this, particularly musicians, and if I am not, so don't feel bad if you're not. Do you, either of you know what synesthesia means? Synesthesia is when you equate geometrical patterns or images with colors or or numbers. When you play a song in your head, you might be thinking numbers. When Dr. Gigi sees orange, she sees the number 24. Honest to God, she, that's 24 to her. She doesn't see orange, she sees 24. It's bizarre, but I found out some people have and a lot of artists have synesthesia. I didn't know it was a year ago. I have no idea. I know that it's a little melody or something that pops into my head. Doom, 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 doom. Oh. Yeah. And then I'll write lyrics around just that. Right. And trying to explain that, you, I'm sure it frustrates, I know it frustrates Alan all the time. Can you can you do this? Dun, 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 dun. Can you do that? I'm like, I don't know what key is in there. <laughs> What's the joke? Uh, is key a G? Fret yeah, three? Fret three. Oh, right, fret three. <laughs> but um, that's how I write. You know, it comes in my head and I write the lyrics out and right on. And make it fit. But I can do that do 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 that he says. Ooh. Yeah. And then tell Alan what he says. Now see with bass is <laughs> Yeah, this guy right here, he can he can I can he can get it. I can go but and he'll he'll oh like this and he'll do it. I'm like, yeah, and then I can start singing and I, oh, okay, it starts making sense. So but, sometimes it happens that way, huh? Yeah. 
Do other songs affect you both? I mean, when you hear other great bands and other uh, artists, uh, who'd your, you list, who do you guys listen to currently? I mean, you said you were Elvis and uh, you were the Stones. I listen to a lot of Taylor Swift. A lot of Taylor Swift. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I've heard more people talking about Taylor Swift. Well, of course, a lot of young people do. I, I very fond of Cat Stevens yeah. um, and Chris Cornell. I like the way they wrote their, their under-meaning yeah. spirituality thing. So when I write, I want I want people to think about what I'm writing. So whenever that's how I approach it, I want someone to go. That makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I could listen to Cat Stevens and Joni Mitchell songs. You got to give a listen to "There's Time." It's on the new album, "The Fight." It's um, I wrote that for my brother, um, and it was about him, you know, using and and there's time. It's time to make a choice. It's you know, it's up to you. That's what that song's about. Right. So. So times are good for both of you now? Is life good for both of you now in this time, at this moment? I believe it is. I, it's, it's better than any day that I was drinking thinking I was having a great time. Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, better than yesterday, not as good as tomorrow. You never know. I mean, again, I, I said that this one minute you could be flying high and having a good time and then somebody dies. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know. We, we just don't know. Life throws us those curveballs and changes happen so fast. But yeah, it seems like you guys are in a good place and a good, a better place when you play collectively. And I think that's uh, that's what makes Cut Like a King is a special band. And you're right here in our midst, in our, our very midst of all these people that want to be here. We have about eight minutes left. You're tuned in to Jacques Talks here on your sports leader, Jacques Talks. We're talking, we're talking baseball and football and rugby with John Mendoza and Randy Neal here on Jacques Talks. I had to say that. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> They're both rolling their eyes. Do I know? Can't wait. Can't wait. We've got seven minutes. Let's get the hell out of here. Um, what are your tombstones going to say? I usually ask this uh, to my guests. Uh, I didn't mean to catch you off guard. But, um, I, you know, people ask me that kind of question. I go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What the hell? What, what is your tombstone? What would you like your tombstone? What legacy would you like to say, say about you, John? Do you have anything in particular? He stayed strong. He what? Stayed strong. He stayed safe. Oh, he, he stayed strong. Stayed heavy. Stayed heavy. Okay. He made a choice. He made a choice. Okay. Those I don't know stuff. if that. Yeah. He stayed strong. Stay strong, which you always say mm -hmm. on your Facebook yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Randy, anything that stands out? I think it just kind of said, "Dance to the music." Dance to the music. Amen. Yeah, dance to the music. Um, you got the original songs, you've got uh, great cover songs, you've got a great dance show, uh, you've got entertainment wrapped up. I think and a lot of that has to be with you as the show man, the, the front man, but you've got a background guys that are so cool. Randy's there, he is, he's in a space, you know, you're in a space. It's kind of hard to see um, uh, the love machine in the back there sometimes, especially at port of pines where it's so crowded. <laughs> I just, you know, Fred has added so much. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's almost, he's pushed us, we're, we're still going up um, with his ability to play the drum. You know, when I, I called Fred, he was pretty shocked. Uh, I, he posted a video from him playing the drums like 30 years ago, and um, I saw that, and Alan and I, we were all talking, we, you know, we need to, to change, we need to, you know, refocus, and so I called Fred, and he was our photographer. He was taking the stuff for the last couple of years, pictures for us. And he goes, are you serious? I go, can you, can you still play? He goes, I practice, you know, once, about an hour, you know, every day. I'll try. So I told him, I go, I'm going to give you three hours worth of music. You just do whatever you can do. Pick out what you can do and come to rehearsal and we'll go from there. He, so that was roughly almost 40 songs. He came and we did probably 24 to 28 songs, some of which he'd never heard, wow. and got through them. And I was actually messing up the lyrics because I was all excited looking back at Randy and looking <laughs> at Alan going, yeah, this is awesome, because he was adding a lot of stuff that we, were, we were lacking. Sure. So huge. it was great. So he's, shout out to Love Machine. He, he uh, definitely feels it in the moment. He's yeah. there with us. Yeah. So. And is it, is it a, it's a collective thing, though. It's not one, it's all above yourselves. The, Collectively, you are you make yourselves that that the sound that you guys uh, exhibit and perform so well. How many sets? How many? How many? You usually play two or three sets, and how many songs in a set? 
Uh, God, I can time it down to 12 songs, 45 minutes. But if they're dancing, I'll call audibles, which sometimes they like and sometimes they hate. But we have roughly close to five hours worth of music we could do. So like, I'm always trying to mix up the, the arrangement. But we'll go. I go, all right, guys, we went long, so we only got five minute break. <laughs> so, because I like, I want everybody to just to yeah. give them as much as we can. So. Yeah, I remember the, uh, you guys played Foxy's at one time. It was mm-hmm. afterwards. That was a different venue. But that's gone now. Foxy's yeah. has moved down to some other. I just saw the uh, uh, owner and Jamie, um, her husband, uh, a couple days, a couple weeks, oh, about a week ago. And they were going to be doing something. They're trying to do it outside. Hay bales and stuff, so we'll be staying tuned for that. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you play like the? Are you gonna be playing the pirate festival or anything like that? Or anything? I don't know. Every time that stuff comes up is when I hear about it. I never see anything prior to that. So by the time it comes up, they're already booked up. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty busy uh, now that I'm home more because I started working in town. Um, I was doing all that on the road, booking everything and calling and talking to people while I was driving, and so it's a little bit easier. Cool. We're filling up, filling up for the summer. Folks, we have been in studio uh, mercilessly about 58 minutes now, uh, talking with two gentlemen that are friends of mine, and I'm honored to call them friends. Uh, John Mendoza, uh, Randy Neal, also in the band of Cutter Like the Kings, is uh, Fred the Love Machine Love on drums, and Alan Hainson on lead guitar. So a uh, shout out to those two. I love you guys. I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing and dancing to your music many, many more times in the future. What is right around the corner on the 17th of May? Your Inoteca. Inoteca, Daryl Winkleman's establishment. Mm-hmm. What's next? Uh, you got to Grants Pass? And then Grants you're... Pass, the Wonder Bar, Wonder Burr, Wonder Blur, uh, Boat Make the following day on the 25th, uh, the Castle Block the Grill. We have. Um, Porta Pines that day. And then back to the Porta Pines, yeah. And then back to Porta Pines that same night on the 25th. July 4th will be the Gold Beach uh, Port headlining there. Some other shows in between before that. Cool. Um, so. And Randy, you're found where? Everywhere, right? All Everywhere. the media, Spotify, Everywhere. YouTube. Just you can look cut it up. like the Kings. Cut it like the Kings. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. I told you this would be a fast hour. I appreciate you coming in. I appreciate your music. I appreciate the influence that all of you uh, and you two particularly exhibit and show on the on and off the off the floor. You put on a great show. I plan on being at many of your shows in the future. So keep up the good work. Let me just say that uh, you and Gigi are one of the those couples that when you walk in, it makes me all right. All right, I get, hey. to, I get to see him. I do their thing. Yep. I like this. Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys too. Gigi does too. All right, folks, we are at that magical ending time of this week's live show of Jock Talks here on KFUG 101.1 FM in beautiful Crescent City. I hope you've enjoyed this show. I know I certainly have. It's been one year. Amanda is here in the in, in, the, in the studio. Amanda, one year ago today I started the show, Jock Talks. Oh, yeah. Happy, so happy anniversary.